Hey, it's Jennifer McGuire. Today I have three ways to use a stencil. Stencils are becoming very popular, so I thought I'd show you three ways to use them besides mist, which uh, for me always creates a mess. So I just have three different ways and three different cards to show you. So that you see the first two and this is the third one here. Now each of these cards have a centerpiece that's about three by four with rounded corners and I use this, the We Are Memory Keepers Punch, to do this. It's an awesome tool. You just pop the top off, put your paper in, put the top back on. It's magnetic. It'll pop right in place and you press firmly and then you get this punch card. Very quick and easy. It's great for punching out um, areas of a photo, but it's also great for card making too. I'll be using one of these on each of my cards today. Now the stencil I'll be using today is this one on the right from Simon Says Stamp and it is called Make a Scene. And what's really unique is they offer the inside pieces for masking. So that's what you see on the left there and I'll be using that on one of my cards. I'll also be using a tool on all these. It's the Post-it um, post Note Sticky Tape. And this is great for kind of masking off parts of stencils that you don't want and also holding it in place. So let's go ahead and stamp into the first technique, which is stamping within a stencil or over a stencil. That's what I did for this card here. All the uh, cute little images there were using the stencil. I'm going to take this and mask off the sun and the moon just so that I have the open grass hills there on the bottom. That's all I want to ink up this time. I'm using a new stamp from Simon Says Stamp. It's got these lots of dots and I'm just going to use the six smallest solid circles here. This is a great stamp set for lots of techniques and this is a perfect example. I've done this before where I die cut an opening and I stamped inside of it and I wanted to show you how I did it with a stencil too. I'm using two shades of green ink here from Hero Arts. One is the Grass Chalk ink and one is the Shadow ink in Green Hills. And I just wanted to do two shades just to kind of add some depth. So I'm just going to go ahead and start with the biggest of my images and fill in uh, quite a bit of the area with the large images. This will save time. The more big images you use, the less you have to fill in. And I always make sure that I overlap the side of the stencil. That way, when we remove the stencil, we'll have a nice defined edge to the shape that we're making. Now, if you don't have the stamp set, you could use little tiny hearts, little tiny flowers. Lots of stamp sets have tiny little icons that are perfect for this technique. If you want to save some time, you could take a background stamp that has lots of stamped area and press it firmly over the stencil, and that will also give you similar results. But I really liked the clear definition that you get with stamping these little images repeatedly in the open area of the stencil. So I'm just going to go ahead and repeat this, and now you'll see I'm on the smallest dot here, just filling in the areas. This may seem like it takes a lot of time, but you get quick moving. Um, I have lots of the dots mounted onto different parts of my um, acrylic block here. It really doesn't take much time at all. And you'll see when I remove the stencil, I get this nice uh, defined area thanks to the stencil. It makes it very quick and easy. Next, I'm going to do the sun. I decided to do the solid circle here for the sun. I'm going to use two shades of ink. I'm going to use the Hero Arts Soft Apricot ink and also the Hero Arts Butter Bar ink. So I'm going to do the same thing. Make sure you overlap some of your stamping on the edge of the stencil so you get a nice defined edge. And then just go ahead and fill in, starting with the bigger images and working your way to the smaller images to fill in any little openings that you may have. Now if you don't have the stamp set, you could use an eraser top, like a pencil eraser top, to do little dots if you wanted to. Lots of things you could use for this. Then I use the cloud with soft pool and tide pool inks just to get some kind of teal color for the clouds. And I'm going to do three clouds on here two of them hanging off the edge. So I'm going to go ahead and skip forward since I have three cards to show in this video. I wanted to show you how I did the little greeting here and the little heart. I'm using a stamp set from Simon Says Stamp. It's called So Beautiful. There's lots of words here that you can piece together to get different greetings and I'll use it on the next card too. And I love the greeting, uh, what a beautiful day. Lots of occasions that you can use this for. So I'm going to mount that onto my block. I like to use grid blocks like this, one from Fiskars. Uh, so that I can line up my stamping when I have a greeting like this. And I always use my Hero Arts black dye ink because it gives a nice crisp image. So I'll go ahead and stamp this on here. And since this is pretty bright card here, I want to make sure that I use black ink so it stands out nice and um, grabs attention from all the colors on the card. Next, I wanted to add a little something to the background. So I have this beauty text background from Impression Obsession. I love it because you can stamp it horizontal or vertical because it's a really big square stamp. And I'm just stamping with Tide Pool onto a Hero Arts note card. Just gives a little something interesting to the background. I use the Simon Says Stamp little mini heart die that you see on the left there to cut this little red heart. And I'm covering it with Wink of Stella glitter pen just to get a little bit of shimmer to it. 
Then I'm going to put a coat of glossy accents on top. This is a great way to kind of create your own embellishment. It really gives a great result and adds a little pop of color to this card. So there you can see what that heart looks like. So that is the first technique that you can use a stencil for to stamp inside the open areas of the stencil. So the next one is a little more obvious. It's to ink over the stencil. Uh, this is something that people do with stencils all the time, but I wanted to tell you what I found has worked best for me. I did this to create this kind of soft background behind the big stamped greeting. Now I find the best inks to use and inking applicator to use uh, when doing stencils is to use distress inks. So I'm going to go ahead and put my mask in place and use my post-it sticky tape to hold it down and also to mask off any areas that I don't want so I don't end up getting it uh, messy or colors where I don't want it. So I'm using the ink blending tool from Ranger and Tim Holtz and a Distress Ink. This one's the Mode Lawn. Now you'll see I'm using like the outside edge of my inking tool to pull color into it from the stencil into the paper. Uh, this gives that nice dark edge along the stencil edge and it makes it super quick and easy and it blends so easily so you don't have to spend a lot of time. Super fast. So here I'm going to do the cloud. I'm using tumbled glass, which is a nice soft blue color. And watch, I'm using like the ink of the inking, or I'm sorry, the edge of the inking tool, starting on the stencil and pulling it in towards the paper. This gives you that dark edge around the edge to give you a nice, uh, really clean cut look. And you can see how easy and quick that blends. So I went ahead and did two more clouds. And on this one, I'm going to go ahead and use the mask stencils that you can get from Simon Says Stamp to go with this outside stencil. It matches it perfectly. I'm going to use this to mask off the cloud, I'm kind of doing a little offset so that when I ink right up against it, I'll get cl um, very close inking to the cloud I already did. So I mask that off. Then I'm going to take the sun and put that down again. I'm going to use the round sun, put some more tape to hold it in place. I'm reusing this tape, by the way. And I'm taking the squeeze lemonade and I'm going to put lots of color on here. Remember, I have that cloud already masked. And then I'm going to go in with some wild honey to just add a little bit of depth to the sun. So you can see how fast and easy this is to do with distress inks. Distress inks are di distress inks, sorry are intended to blend well when you use the inking tool. So they're definitely worth it when you're doing any kind of inking over stenciling. It's by far my favorite and you can see how quick and easy it was. I've arranged my words from the So Beautiful stamp set onto my Martha Stewart footed press. You can see I use the grid lines just to line them up straight. And I'm gonna ink it up with my favorite black dye ink. Then I'm just gonna kind of position it. You can see me kind of wiggle it around on the little feet on the press and then just press it as soon as I have it straight and get a nice transfer of the ink onto the paper. This is a great stamp set for stamping something big and bold over a stamped background. I used one of my favorite old memory box dies to cut some little butterflies from red cardstock. Now to make them look like they're kind of fluttering or dimensional, I'm putting a dot of glossy accents just on the back center of the butterflies, a tiny little dot, and I'll add them to the card. And I'm going to set that aside to dry. Now I'm going to go ahead and stamp the note card while I'm waiting for it to dry. I've inked up that same background. Look at it. This time I'm using it um, on a vertical card. This is a Hero Arts craft note card and I'm using the Hero Arts Unicorn ink to stamp on it. You can see that nice subtle background. Now that the glossy accents have dried, I'm going to kind of pull the little wings up so I get some nice dimension. And I'm going to squeeze some glossy accents under the wings, a pretty good sized glob, so that when it dries, those wings stay um, pushed forward to give it some dimension. Then I added some um, more of that Wink Estella glitter pen and some glossy accents and ended up with those nice little butterfly embellishments. So now it's time to move on to the technique number three and this is to use some sort of paste over stencil. There's lots of different kinds of products like this in the market right now. My favorite is the Faro because it gives this metallic look that I used on the clouds and the moon here. So this is very easy to use. It's kind of messy, but definitely worth the effort. I've just punched another one of my pieces for the background here, and I'm going to put the stencil right in place. This is the Silver Faro. It's just, it's kind of like a paste or a toothpaste, kind of. And I'm just using any kind of tool. You can use a popsicle stick or anything to kind of slop some right over the opening on my stencil. And then I'm just going to take a business card, but you could use a credit card or you can use a scrap piece of cardstock to just smear it right across and just go smooth with the top of the stencil. The dimension of the stencil will result in dimension um, of the product when you're done. So there I'm going to remove the stencil and let that dry before you move on to the next step. So you just give it about 20 minutes to dry. 
This time I'm using the Graphite Ferro. I love this one. It's like a dark gray with some metallic look to it. And I'll just smear it right across the moon here. You can see how quick and easy that is. And you want to wipe your stents off very good quickly before this dries after you've removed it. Very easy to do. You just want to clean it up pretty quickly so it doesn't dry. Otherwise, it's harder to get off. Now I'm going to let that dry and do two more clouds. You can see I've done two more clouds there. And I love the dimension that this gives and also the texture. It's great for a masculine card. This time I'm stamping a greeting from a Kelly Perky stamp set called Dude. And it's a masculine stamp set. And I'm going to stamp You Are Amazing with Versamark ink and add some white embossing powder and heat set it. I also die cut some little stars here from white cardstock and I wanted them to be gold. So this time I'm using the gold wink of Stella Pen. Before I was using the clear, this time I'm using the gold and I'm just going to color this white die cut and it softens as you let it dry. And then I also covered it with some glossy accents as I did before to get those star embellishments. So there you have the third way to use a stencil. I hope this inspires you to use your stencils in creative ways. These are just three of many techniques that you can do. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time.